So hello everyone, we are back and we have now a session on OPN AI solving. And Chitesh, tell us more about it. Welcome everybody back uh, to the Avengers Tower. Together with us right now, we have Shailendra Singh. Hello Shailendra, how are you? Shailendra is a co-founder of uh, Botix Lab and he has a 16 plus experience in uh, in a rich global uh, uh, experience and has one of the is one of the veterans in the intelligent automate, automation space and regarding AI. Uh, Shailendra, can you tell us a bit more about your session and uh, uh, which who are the targeted audience? Thank you so much, uh, uh, MSCC, for giving me this chance. And uh, I'll be walk through uh, uh, to some use cases as well as the, how the RP industry has evolved over the years and. Uh, Lately, the artificial intelligence has joined the party in solving uh, so many uh, mission critical business challenges. So I will be uh, just uh, uh, going through uh, with the basic fundamental of what is uh, what exactly the RPA is and uh, what is the close association of artificial intelligence with the RPA because over the year the industry is, is keep on evolving. Uh, it just started in the, in the, in the year 2000. And uh, after uh, almost a decade, we see RP industry is getting mature year by year. So a quick uh, introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Shalanda Singh. Uh, I'm into the technologies. I've been the, uh, into the automations. Uh, I started as a, as a software developer, mainly in, on Oracle side and uh, lately, uh, down the line in my career, I was uh, having uh, some consulting background. And that's my Twitter handle, Shell Lavi. So uh, straight away, I will just uh, uh, coming to the direct point. So many people were expecting uh, what is lies in my presentations. So when we talk about the business challenges at, uh, let's say, in 2020, so when we funnel down, we we come across to very prominent or business challenges across the industries. So if I if I uh, name it, efficacy as well as uh, your effectiveness, your efficiency, your productivity, uh, that's the challenge every organizations or every industries uh, uh, having upfront and. Uh, whatsoever the industry has moved on or progressed, what are their success ratio? In terms of uh, fulfilling their objective, strategic wise, as well as uh, growth wise. And uh, when, we, when we see uh, the digital uh, trends nowadays, uh, where everything is getting mature overnight or over months, we see the one of the biggest challenge we see the agility that means like you have to tweak yourself you have to mold yourself you have to be flexible uh, you have to be flexible to break some uh, uh, silos you break some business uh, uh, approaches with the speed lightning speed so uh, speed and agility is, is still uh, uh, possesses a great challenge in the business house, be it small, medium, or large organizations. And uh, it is always uh, used to be dropped on. It's all the decisions has started uh, getting materialized from the top level to the uh, ground level. Another another business challenge we, we talk about today is the competition. Uh, we see so many uh, new players are coming into the your industries every day, every month, and there is no guarantee you will sustain your business for next year or next five years or next decade. So the competition is very fierce, very cutthroat, very red-blooded, and you have to overcome your challenges in terms of beating your next door or global competitors. Another business challenge 
this talks about it's funneled down with a profit or the money uh, it generates over the over the course of uh, executions and uh, be it uh, your you are profitable in year one to year five but uh, there's no SS guarantee you will sustain and the growth will be in your trajectory for coming years so when we when we see the left hand side and when i when i uh, talk about the uh, right hand side the people process technologies plus data because the what the world has produced uh, the, the amount of data in last five years has not produced in last 75 years so you can see the the quantum and the size of the data is getting generated each second or each millisecond and how you are copying with your own generated people generated employee generated or ecosystem generated data to map with your employees to map with your existing processes be it right or be it uh, uh, old days be it uh, more advanced and what is the technology platform you are having it to get utilizations of that so enough enough uh, 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 to set a tone for business challenges so i'm just uh, moving uh, ahead so when when we see uh, there are challenges and uh, uh, we see yes there are some road blockers so let's identify the road blockers uh, we say the change management the culture of uh, speed small medium or large organizations is always remained uh, one of the very prominent factor uh, and uh, there is there is there is a uh, fundamental uh, uh, i would say uh, the heart of running of your business is dependent on some legacies some new trends or some mix of, of uh, systems so you cannot uh, rule over uh, still having used the legacy systems in the in the parallel and uh, another another roadblock we see uh, there is there is a uh, 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 hesitations of going digital uh, due to so many uh, uh, negative factors like okay data privacy data theft or keep putting your data uh, on public for your competitors to take advantage but having said that uh, uh, going digital will always give you the more fuel to fly high rather than uh, stay on uh, uh, in the in the small zone and uh, another another big challenge is that we we as a human we always think okay all the tasks we have been uh, doing uh, across the industries across the hierarchy of uh, people uh, it's ultimately we need to do that but uh, nowadays uh, this business challenge has been challenged by the robots the virtual robots workforce as well as artificial intelligence is coming up very heavily so uh, how how we can say that uh, uh, what technologies what rpa or artificial intelligence uh, is required for some particular uh, industries or some organizations so uh, before embarking or jumping into the any any technology is a handshake uh, we we had to just uh, sanitize we had to just look back and see where we are standing on the uh, digital maturity curve and uh, if you are no wise if you are not having any exposure to the digitalizations uh, uh, understanding the basic understanding of then then it will be a complete suicide so these are the these are the very uh, industry uh, specific very uh, uh, orthodox uh, uh, majority model and they follow they follow some trends uh, it is possible to uh, jump directly from the organized to the connected or intelligent but it is less likely you are reactive and uh, you directly want to jump onto the intelligence or connected this is very less likely because uh, there are fundamental uh, base uh, covers 
fundamental miles you need to you need to uh, cover to come to the this journey front path so i'm not going bored into the this detail what are the uh, indicators what are the what are the uh, characteristics of uh, uh, all these uh, model so i'll just uh, coming straight away to the rpa so rpa rpa uh, been into the this uh, industry uh, in since 2014 2014 was the first time i I did my first certifications and uh, I designed the first robots. But that time, uh, the industry was uh, not having uh, any any serious concentrations. And over the year, it has become a a I would say the must-have or a mandatory kind of uh, uh, technologies to be tried out across the industries. So when when we see uh, uh, we all suffer with the three R's. Uh, our routine task every day we come to the office we do some uh, xyz uh, maker checker approver doing uh, across the uh, our applications on the laptop or pc or mobile and we keep on doing these things over and over time why we are doing that because they they are being uh, uh, designed to follow some rules so uh, routine, repetitive, and the rules-driven actions, we all have been doing that. And uh, that is the place, that is the chance where the robots are coming into our daily workforce, be it uh, front, uh, front office, middle office, back office, or I would say the IT operations also. Right. So uh, what exactly the definitions of the robots, they are a virtual software coded uh, robots. So actually everything works on some logic, everything works on some piece of code. So they are uh, uh, software, software robots. And uh, whatever we are doing uh, on our daily basis, they mimic our actions, they mimic our, our task, they mimic our uh, interactions uh, with human, as well as the interaction with the uh, uh, any any software applications we are we are using every day, and uh, it's not only the one. I'm um, I'm more into the functional side. I'm more into the technical side. I'm more into the uh, uh, customer centric side. Uh, at the end of the day, when the data is getting originated and it is getting processed, as as well as uh, when it reside uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, in terms of the complete cycle of the of the uh, process, we we get it report right, record to report. So we would say we come across to many cross functionals and the cross applications. So uh, there are the needs where we are following our repetitive uh, and the rule based things. The robots are designed to uh, mimic our actions. So. Uh, Every organization is also having uh, their utmost uh, 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 challenges like productivity of my staff, productivity and the utilizations of my staff, the number of FTPs I'm having into my this uh, one particular uh, department or in the large organizations. Am I justifying by keeping these large or small or medium like workforce? So accordingly, uh, it funnel down to the productivity at the, at the end of the day. And why the robots are taking advantage? Because these tasks are not uh, adding any value uh, to your daily task. Uh, let the robot do the basic fundamental rule-based repetitive or routine task, and you are free, you are getting free uh, for this uh, everyday uh, monopoly of uh, the data getting processed by by manual uh, manual stuff, and you started uh, giving your additional thought process, your critical thinking, utilizations of what has been done, what has what the data is representing about customers. Because at the end of the day, customer is the king. Uh, every organization we we see around the around the world is ultimately uh, uh, having the customer as they got, right? So, <clears throat> so these robots, these virtual robots, uh, uh, 
definitely give you some uh, cost reductions. Uh, at the at the same time, uh, we as a human uh, intend to do a lot of uh, human errors because of our our uh, uh, nature, uh, human nature, and uh, there is a there is an element of efficiency reductions after n number of hours uh, continuous work. So. Uh, robots never get tired. They never take holidays. They never uh, get uh, any any kind of human errors. But there are some other limitations as well as uh, the kind of critical thing we put across to deal some exceptions or special cases. Robots are not yet there. That's why the artificial intelligence is playing some uh, kind of uh, a pushing element to think to let the robot think like us and this is very uh, very uh, i would say business uh, case to case scenarios so uh, it really gives you uh, increase in your compliance risk uh, regulatory uh, kind of uh, uh, satisfactions when we are about to follow these kind of rules uh, Yes, my topic says uh, RPA as well as AI. So uh, now the world has uh, uh, jumped into the uh, hyper automations. Hyper automation is the combinations of your your very strategic, uh, straightforward, your repeated tasks getting automated, and with the machine learning, we are trying to solve some uh, the the solutions with the with the patterns what what are the exceptions is coming and how they are getting treated by human to get it solved so that the machine uh, as well as machine started doing the same thing again and again. <clears throat> so uh, RPL is the groundwork for enterprise uh, artificial intelligence and the intelligent applications because it's not only the one applications rules or govern the whole organizations. There are many multiple applications you have to deal with uh, uh, your different uh, quadrants. I would say front office, middle office, back office and the IT operations. So all has to be aligned and the data transmissions between the, your interdepartment has to be streamlined, has to be understand and it should be the single source of the truth, right? So uh, one set of the data is being interpreted by one particular department or one particular section of the people uh, should have the same meaning for the other sections of uh, peoples as well as departments, right? So uh, the digital strategies uh, uh, are getting uh, very much importance in uh, IT budgets or any any growth uh, aspects of any organization so uh, rpa and as well as ai is always uh, the first one to be counted on that so when when we see uh, the hyper automation so it's not only uh, classifying your processes and getting uh, uh, automated uh, it's, it's more than that. Uh, you have so many other external or internal applications also, dependent uh, applications also uh, from the uh, external uh, sources, as well as uh, we have uh, three sets of uh, three kind of the data set, uh, be it uh, uh, written, be it voice or be it video. So how that's the data is uh, getting uh, uh, meaningful from the all three channels and on top of that we build some intelligence uh, with, the, with the help of the machine learning and uh, that's covered the, all the four quadrants. And the, over the year, uh, the UI automation is is one of the one of the uh, first to go in the industries. And uh, over the years, uh, as we have uh, 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 Play Stores, we have App Store. Uh, so the there is a time with the board stores also. So these board stores are ready made uh, uh, ready made uh, sections where they have been applied 
across the industries on some big players like any ERP, CRM, uh, Beat. Uh, I'll, I'll just name uh, some Oracle, SAP, Navigence, or any any you you name it, or any uh, ID operation side also. Uh, we have our orthodox uh, uh, cloud Azure uh, or whatever. So, so, so that uh, all the our, our PA tool the vendors has thought it is a necessary because across across the uh, case to case they have to build uh, the same use case again and again. So they thought of creating these re ready to use adapters as well as the bot stores. So uh, if anybody is using any Salesforce and they want to extract the data in terms of uh, more meaningful uh, cleansing, sanitizations of your data, pushing and pulling uh, mechanism, it also applies a lot there. So the, the bot uh, vendors has uh, started coming up with the bot stores. So they are like ready to play. You buy when you need it, when you don't need it, you don't subscribe, you unsubscribe, and that's that's the way it has uh, uh, helping the industries across. So uh, when I, when I was uh, talking about RPA and the AI, the joint is uh, machine learning. So uh, this shows very clearly uh, the machine learning importance because uh, you because most of the time when it is not handled by RPA because it is rule based and that we are having the most uh, most of the time is structured data. So the machine learning plays the role where we started uh, learning. We started uh, handling lots of unstructured data and the human in, uh, intervention is, is still very required. So the machine started learning how we are solving these assertions or, or special cases, uh, case by case. So over the period of uh, uh, the data feed, uh, started learning the pattern, it started learning the uh, uh, rectification, it started learning what is the solutions flow, right? And uh, on the third level, on the third stage, when we see uh, uh, chatbots are there, uh, they works as good as like uh, any human, uh, they understand our our uh, uh, languages, what we we be it voice or be it chat. So we, they they try to uh, uh, use the intelligence what is being built to understand these NLPs or NLGs, natural language generations also. So the reading and the visions they started getting. And then the final, your artificial intelligence layer is uh, established. And uh, the more the data lake, the heavier the data lake we started uh, uh, exploring, uh, the better results uh, comes up. And especially uh, why we uh, always have the artificial intelligence, because uh, there are some certain uh, decisions we as a human take. And uh, on the behalf of the machine, Machines, we want to see uh, how the machine is taking that all these decisions, which has to be vetted uh, uh, by humans as well. Uh, now we see uh, there are uh, completely four quadrants. Uh, we we come across to any organizations. We have uh, uh, your our supplier side. We have our customer side. We have our partners. We have our people's uh, human resources, and we need 360 degree coverage of what whosoever is attached into the ecosystems. So that so that uh, there is there is no chance of. Uh, 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 keeping someone's uh, half-heartedly or out of the 360 degree coverage. Uh, some some departments like support, sales, HR, your shared service centers, your front office, uh, it's always always plays as a as a uh, connector when the data is getting originated, processed, and finalizations. Right. We have multiple slacks to get communicated uh, uh, with a uh, number of channels internally and externally. And uh, the bot development is also uh, 
uh, coping with the new trends in the software development and uh, especially uh, the digital trends. Uh, I would I would just come directly uh, on some very prominent figures. Uh, uh, it is RP industry as an industry is being uh, uh, increasing by forty percent year on year uh, growth, and uh, it is estimated to say that. Uh, by 2022, it's going to be the three billion. But uh, Gartner says it's 2.4 billion dollars industries for all the RP uh, spending as a software. So do not forget the base software. You every organization is already having it. So this is a layer, a virtual layer on your software, which does the intelligence part as well as it gives you the comfort of doing the things much faster. So on the left hand side, uh, you would see uh, this is the very latest data as of June 2020. Uh, uh, prominent uh, players like UA Path, Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, Work Fusions, Win Automations, they are like uh, uh, quite leading the, leading the way. Uh, they put a lots of uh, uh, research and development, uh, as well as uh, uh, the checking the future kind of uh, uh, spending, uh, and the rest, uh, the challengers, as well as the visionaries and the niche players, take advantage of these uh, 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 all the research they are putting in across. So Microsoft is also also coming up very heavily. Uh, they just uh, acquired the Softomotics, and uh, they are trying to cover what uh, the leaders are leaders are doing that so very soon we will see uh, so many so many uh, uh, changes uh, in challengers uh, and the niche players and the visionary so when when we see uh, i'm just talking about uh, more about the business side so now i will come on the rpa uh, rpa tools what what are the basic or typical capabilities? They should be having a, a very good designer. Uh, they should uh, help us to automate what we are doing on desktop or laptop every day. Uh, because we always interact with the web, so the web automations, the 3D connectors should be there. It should be multitasker, uh, recorder, scheduler, uh, mouse and keyboard automations. The, you, you can just imagine. To process one record, uh, maybe sometimes we do some uh, input, we some edit, we do some right click of our mouse, uh, and we select some actions items. So these are like our our daily daily things to be uh, to be taken care of by the bot. So these are the very typical uh, capabilities every uh, tool must have. Uh, your UI designer has to be very uh, advanced in the look and feel. Uh, and uh, another one is uh, email notifications, how you are triggering uh, the systems and uh, how the expressions are channelizing. So all these, all these uh, uh, capability has to be there. Your file folder uh, management and automations, identifications, uh, input folder, output folder, or uh, verifications folder. Excel automation is one of the one of the most used capabilities. We'll see in couple of couple of minutes. And the auto logins, uh, where we see, yes, uh, these are uh, by default has to be has to be uh, uh, login as soon as the data fed is there. As soon as the data pops up, it does the same thing. FTP uh, automations. This is also like very very prominent across the industry. I would say uh, exception handling is very uh, very vast, as well as how the tool is uh, handling their own exceptions. So this this is the that capability I'm talking about. Otherwise, your business exceptions might be different from the another business, be it into the same uh, industries. Uh, but how the tool is uh, handling their own uh, uh, throws and exceptions and uh, how quickly they are learning from their own exceptions handlings. 
So that's that's the very uh, very important uh, capabilities. I would say the OCR optical character recognitions. Nowadays we are living into the Word Excel PDF. Word Excel PDF, Word Excel PDF, right. So the wherever we are having any, any PDF or scan document, uh, the OCR is the only savior, right. So the machine started extracting the information from your PDF and uh, putting back into the uh, your normal conventional uh, uh, medium, be it uh, Excel or be it your email, be it your uh, Word document, right. And uh, we we see we see some uh, uh, RPA uh, is having the capability as an attendant and a not attendant. Attendant means like okay, uh, it is basically your desktop automations where and when you required you trigger them to start doing that and it is in your control. Anytime you can trigger them on, trigger them off. Whereas a non attendant is like is. It's basically on a data feed. As soon as the data is available, start performing it. Be respective of any uh, morning, day, night, afternoon. So it, it, they trigger with the feed of the data. Uh, whatever the bots are doing, so the auditing and the logs has to be has to be maintained very professionally uh, because at the end of the day, the log organizations uh, goes through uh, their annual annual stretch free uh, process that is audit. So it has to be maintained uh, very very uh, prominently. And the whatsoever is the scrapping uh, web scraping and the video recorder, it should be having. So the web data extractions, PDF automation, scripting support. Yeah, this is very, very interesting uh, uh, add-on on to the uh, every tool. Uh, we have not a, uh, we don't have a, a single way of uh, solving any business problem by X or Y or Z uh, technologies or, or I would say language. So nowadays, uh, which language, which scenarios are fitting, that's more important. So your scripting, what you are using uh, in your tool has to be uh, very well aligned or has to be uh, adjusted to writing your own scripts in the tool itself. So when I, when I talk about the RPA types, uh, I already already uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, we have very straightforward wherever we are having structured data and uh, processing the rules. Your task force. It's a complete process, and they are very simple uh, to implement, and they are very quick. Within a few weeks, they can do wonders. Second thing comes as a system parts. So you want to have a next step in terms of your structured data is becoming uh, uh, non-structured data, but it is having a very business, a very complex kind of uh, business rules, and uh, you have some dependency internally and externally. So you started building the system parts. And then finally comes with the artificial intelligence parts. Uh, they started uh, thinking of, like ourselves, they're thinking about the business point of view side, not our not like us and they started learning with the pattern the more data, data feed so this i already covered so uh, the trend is uh, from simple to the complex and the rapiding is also not uh, that uh, into the years that is uh, in some months uh, Again, I think uh, how you how you embark on a program, which process, so you can easily identify my routine. This is repetitive. This is rule driven. So three hours always applied. And if it is being triggered by electronic input or there is a, some initiations as digital, you can you can start thinking about. So one is end to end automation. One is partial automations. And uh, if you are trying to automate any process which is already called as a bad process, 
so the garbage in garbage out so the bad process automations will not lead you anywhere i will just uh, keep uh, haunting you back why it was done until unless it is re engineered so uh, now it is uh, uh, we we see so many our uh, services so rpi as a service is also also very prominent uh, because there are some uh, uh, big flag bearers uh, pointers because we have very tight deadlines or uh, quick things because there are some rules regulations are going to happen next month or over the weeks and uh, we have to tweak our own uh, existing systems be it legacy or be it uh, ad any advance but uh, there are some changes up front so the speed this go to the market and uh, uh, agility inside yourself and the cost operation nowadays uh, so many so many uh, uh, pricing uh, i would say uh, pricing factors also uh, influence rpa being as a service so uh, volume based or uh, orthodox uh, uh, buy it and use it when you don't use it uh, unsubscribe it so kind of kind of these things so how you uh, how you particularly uh, select and the, your prioritizations so this is this is a very simple matrix which is easy and having the highest impact so that should be your first one and uh, if it is high impact keep it aside if it is low impact and easy still can you can do it and uh, that's that's the way the process is is getting selected as well as prioritized so typically uh, these as i said these are these are not uh, going into the uh, the months these are like uh, proof of concept you do some uh, uh, business uh, uh, case presentation center of excellence and then you scale up yes so i'll, I'll just i'll just quickly uh, quickly go into some industry challenge right okay this is this is a uh, one invoice verification process we we help one organizations it used to take complete one day uh, each month and uh, bot is being done in less than 30 minutes so i will just uh, i'll just come across to uh, very quickly a video i would just want to play it so you must be thinking uh, how these robots are robots are prepared, how they are being prepared so
uh, this was a one of the demonstrations. Uh, we have uh, helped one customer to achieve uh, their financial state. Still very dynamic in, in its own nature, but uh, we able to streamline some processes, uh, make it a, as a standard routine, and then the bot has helped them very, very drastically over 100, 100 minutes reduced to the less than five minutes. So that's the power you can see uh, in the technologies, the, uh, the bots and our human logic is there to make uh, some wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, piece of piece of technology. I'm not I'm not going uh, more into the or these details. Uh, there are uh, some. Uh, uh, this I love I love this uh, uh, saying. Uh, expect that everything that can and should be automated in sooner or later. So it's your choice. You do it rightly or you do it wrongly, but sooner or later they will be get automated. So that's it. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Um, open to have uh, and and yes, not to forget. Uh, uh, try out to this automation Ace.ai. They have a very a very cool uh, uh, bot stores and uh, they have uh, F3 bot uh, to try out. So many so many ready adapters. You can you can just. Uh, uh, have it. So this is about my company. Uh, I'm the co-founder of this products labs, and uh, that's that's how we are doing that. And uh, please reach out to me on my address and my Twitter handle. I'll be happy to answer any of your RPA or AI query. Thank you, Shailendra. I love how the presentation was very well balanced and mature, informing uh, all of us, the audience, how the correct uh, AI ecosystem is in Mauritius international as well. Uh, AI, I would say it's a very interesting experience so far because uh, it was a huge hype uh, during the late 90s and early uh, 2000 because of the Terminator movie. Uh, but now, now time has changed and we actually have matured tools and services. I personally use uh, OPA myself, uh, UiPuff, uh, because I was very lazy at work. And I had to do a very mundane, repetitive task. It would have taken me three days, but uh, as a tool, it was so easy. I did it in three to four hours. Um, Absolutely. I believe, yeah. I believe uh, Botix in Mauritius is currently spearheading uh, the fourth industrial revolution where we have to make uh, operation more and more efficient in order to reduce uh, the amount of waste we produce uh, regarding uh, to limit uh, our use of resources and it is also quintessential uh, currently to make the in our industry greener for climate change. Um, uh, you mentioned briefly some success in stories. would like to hear more but unfortunately time ran out. Uh, how can a business uh, in Mauritius or international contact you, contact boutiques for consultancy? So that's that's my email address and uh, that's my uh, Twitter handle. I'm sure it is visible uh, across everyone. So okay, um, um, and, uh, th th and through the uh, MSCC uh, uh, community, I'm always there. He's been my friend uh, since the uh, first conference five years back, seven years back. So I'm I'm based in Mauritius. I'm uh, living in Mauritius for past 15, 16 years. So I'm I'm very close. Another question: Does yeah. but uh, do you have any plan to collaborate and organize fun events uh, with uh, university students, the community, the developer community into advancing or R&D in this field? Mauritius? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, actually, uh, at the Botics, we have two wings. So one is the uh, uh, RPA and the AI wing, and the second one is the research and development. In research and development, we have been uh, exploring all the all the avenues, uh, plus the possibility of technologies, be it computer vision, be it humanoid. Uh, so let, let me just share that uh, last year we have uh, uh, manufactured uh, Ninety percent in-house through 3D printers, a, a a humanoid, right? As well as the human arm, and uh, we have been uh, playing uh, uh, IOTs as well as the sensors. So uh, uh, 
especially uh, university students yes we are very open uh, for the internship as well as uh, uh, exposure to the world of ai as well as rp yep awesome awesome unfortunately you will run out of time we'd like to hear more maybe later we can have a chat uh, thank you very much Alejandra, for uh, presenting thank you thank you so much guys have a nice day Bye. have a nice day you too bye bye